Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's on the another video. Here we go. Today, we are on an adventure unlike any other adventure we've taken. No, that's not true. Because I've tried I've filmed with Travel Channel. Well, I guess not here on It's On The. It's been that was Discovery. No, it's travel. It's Travel Channel. <laughs> oh, too many <laughs> things, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I can't keep them straight. But today we are filming with the Travel Channel. Excuse me, I'm filming with the Travel Channel. Tuners is with me. Hello, Tuners. <laughs> And uh, we are making a detour on our way to film with the Travel Channel. And we are currently in Villisca, Iowa. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what Villisca, Iowa means, Villisca is synonymous with basically true crime. Because here in Villisca, in the early 1900s, a family of six and two guests for the night were brutally murdered by an anonymous killer or killers in their home they were bludgeoned to death with an ax. If you do a quick internet search to figure out uh, details about it, you'll quickly find out that it was insane. Anyways, a good friend of mine, Johnny Hauser, who's been featured on my channel before. <laughs> yeah. He is the tour guide of the Beliska house. And we're gonna stop by, we're gonna take tunes to the house for the very first time. We're gonna catch up with Johnny a little bit and get this party started. There she is, kids. The Villisca X Murder House. Wow. And there's Tiny reacting to it for the first time. <laughs> it's just so like, it's just a normal house. Yeah. So it's just crazy that this happened here. Little and quaint. Oh, the old girl. Yeah. Still here. Hasn't changed much. You still get a, a lot of traffic through here? We've been doing 80 to 120 a day. Jeez, man. aren't open yet. Oh, okay. But overnights are just nonstop. Wow. All these years later. Yeah. Like it's been 14 years since I first came here. Yeah. And it was nothing then, at least compared to how yeah. it became, what it became. Oh, definitely. You know? I tell the story all the time of here comes these teenagers and I'm thinking they're definitely going to trash the place. Party and beer <laughs> cans everywhere to you guys. Yep. <laughs> and then you get snowed in. The heater, which was right here ran out, so we're like knocking on Johnny's door in the middle of the night, like, yo. Luckily, they're they're up partying, playing Wii. Yeah. And he's like, yo. Oh. coffee? Yeah, we're like, shoot, yeah. And so we went and got an, a propane tank at Casey's, came in here, and he's like, come over and hang out while it warms the house up. So we went over there, drank coffee, played Wii, and <laughs> came over here back at like two o'clock in the morning, and first time we ever slept here, oh. voluntarily. Well, maybe not oh. even voluntarily. At that point, it was probably more involuntary. Maybe forget that. Yeah, I mean, the house looks the same. Yeah. It's not like there's been much of anything done. Dude, I don't even remember the last time I was here. It's probably maybe 14. I think it's on my Instagram somewhere. No kidding. Yeah. And I haven't seen you since, it's been almost two years since I saw you. Yeah. At Hauntacon, the first one. Let's go up here, retainers. So you can see where they're all mostly killed. I think they're done. I hope they're done. This is so cool. Yeah, isn't this crazy? Yeah. Yeah, this is where they say that the the killer stayed in here and he was smoking cigarettes. Oh, okay. So was this an attic, like a storage area? I would assume so. I'm not really sure what attics were used for back then, oh, but. That's creepy. I think it's crazy how it has the Amityville Horror House eyes. Like the, those windows that are on the Amityville Horror House are here. Whoa. That's Isn't that creepy? Crazy. Yeah. It's always creeped me out. Yeah. Like for when we first pulled up, I was like, holy crap, it has Amityville eyes. Like what are the odds of that? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. This is a nice room. Mm-hmm. And this, this attic here, or this door here is synonymous with opening and closing.
you checked everything for breezes? Oh, yeah. And... We've been here when it's dead as a doornail outside. We've been here during hurricane force winds, basically. And on the windier nights, it doesn't move. And on the silent nights, it does. And vice versa, you know. And we'll have times where we've, like, the downstairs door that Johnny unlocked. When we f were filming for Haunted Iowa, it literally just flew open. The door was securely latched each time it was opened. And it was shut, clicked, everything. There was no reason for it to open up. So what do you think that that could be? Like, what is the energy there? They, it's always been said that the kids are hiding in the attic, or excuse me, in the, uh, the closet. And then when we had uh, DJ, when we filmed Haunted Iowa, DJ was doing his initiation session in the, in the cellar. Literally, well, I guess it was before I had my incident down there. Um, and the door flew open downstairs and so he's below the door and he hears. Oh boy, I don't remember these floors rocking so much. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna bring the house down. <laughs> yeah, they are getting wobbly. One of the worst things that's ever happened here lately. It's Friday night and I came down here to fix this thing and lock the kitchen door so nobody would come in and somebody walks in. And I'm just like, who's this? Like nobody's supposed to be here. Yeah. And it's like, well, they broke in, idiot. You know? So, yeah. yeah up here like they don't know i'm up here so i hide in the closet oh. <laughs> and the plane would scare the crap out of this kid and just be like why are you breaking in if you want to see it i'll just show it to you yeah they're walking around downstairs forever i didn't think they were going to come up come up into the room i kicked the door open to the like, ah nobody nothing <gasps> and i froze like i couldn't move i was just like and i want to say hello and it was like i couldn't even talk and to oh. make myself go around that corner <laughs> It was like, a lot of work. Yeah, and then I like booked it down the stairs. Door was still locked. Check the house real quick. Watch a surveillance video. Um, Holy crap, dude! I just got chills. That's creepy. And when I kicked that thing, who you you kicked it hard? Kicked it hard. Yeah. You want to scare the crap out of whoever was in here? Yeah. <laughs> dude. You scared yourself. Yeah. It was. And then you always hear the, oh, it's like an ice, ice cold blast. Yeah. I was like, yeah, right. everybody says that. Nobody, I've never experienced it. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was like just super, like a ice rush cold. of cold. So I probably scared the ghost. Probably. Uh, he's yeah. like, ah, and he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Not once did I ever think it was a ghost. No. It's just like, somebody's in the house. And I figured as a kid, cause like what grown person would right. break yeah, in the house. Like right. That's it was nuts. Like, like coming up coming. the steps down the hall. Oh, wow. There's about three days before I could come back and I'm just like, gonna work here, leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. Yeah, seriously, dude, holy crap. So, would this been a mom and dad yep. and this is where all the kids and the yep. visitors Yep, so their, their kids slept here, then mom and dad slept here. There were still marks in the ceilings. Yes. When Darwin bought this, right? That was all wallpapered over that mark. And that's from the axe swinging back Whoa. and coming down. So like that's original. You remember that room had wallpaper on? Yeah. When you guys Does it not have it anymore? We I didn't pay attention. It, off. it was like three layers of wallpaper. And underneath all of it was... Oh my goodness. Oh which I can't say 100%. God. Right. But... How much of this is original? basically okay and everything else is brought in to try to make as time period as possible sure you know mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever seen these marks in here johnny so you oh, said really? no that's crazy huh so when we did the reenactment oh man i laid here <laughs> oh. megan laid here just like it's the start of like bad like the whole vibe chief yeah it's just like out of it yeah. And then wow. I was downstairs and I look at the IR camera and I squint at it. Mm -hmm. And then I walk over to where Cole and Cole, Gert. Yeah, was in the blue and I room. I thought I heard the voice. The, the yep. Pot. Yep. I said, "Do it. Do it three times."
Johnny ended the reenactment because he heard this being whispered in his ear. Smiling. Uh huh. Time. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, because you hit Seth, and we had the, the camera over here, and you're bringing the axe to swing at DJ, and he just has this big, evil grin on his face. Oh, I just got chills, dude. Whew. Oh, it's so creepy. I just like wanted to go home and curl up in my fetal. Yeah, you were done after that. Dirty, yeah, dirty. you're like, I, I'm done. I gotta go home. And go we're like, okay. Four times a week. Yep. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang out there. Yeah. Open. Yeah. Ah, oh, unbelievable. The things in this house. All right, so we're gonna go in the cellar now. This is this is where I had the most profound experience of my entire paranormal career. One of the main reasons why I don't do this anymore. And I'll explain what we were doing down here. Oh, wow, this is a thing. Oh, yep, it has been a moment. There it is, that's the spot. So, on this wall here is where the giant snake head came out. Giant snake head came out right here and came out full body length and then dropped and slapped against the wall, came down. I'm standing right here. Wow, it's like it was legit happening earlier. Slithered on the ground. Went to this wall, came around, came back down, and came to my feet. And that's where it started to slither around my feet and then up around, up around my body. And then Megan and Deej were over here provoking things. And we were down here provoking in a manner of trying to get in the mindset of the killer or killers like, thinking about it, talking about like, what are we gonna do? Or this, this is how we should kill everybody. This is how we should murder everybody, which is really morbid. But like we went to extremes back in the day and I almost went off and punched Megan cause I was feeling so overwhelmed by negative presence then. So we left, came back and I said, well, I'll just stand in this corner and just ignore you guys. You guys do your thing over here and I'll stand here. Demonic snake entity came out of that wall and came down and happened right here. So, and then we took so Gert shoved him through that window up there and he crawled through the underneath the entire house by himself. What? Down the cellar. <laughs> climbing back into the crawl space. Let me get in there and then give me the camera. All right. Test, test, test. Look at that cute butt. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, here I am under the Velisca house. It's a very tight squeeze. There's about maybe, if I'm lucky, two feet between the ground and high. No, one's gotta be lower than that. So yeah, then DJ was down here doing his initiation session, locked in here by himself for I think 35, 40 minutes. The house was locked, because anytime we left, we made, made sure the house was locked, just because you can't trust people, you know, going into the house and doing stuff. And the door was like blew open and he heard do 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 running through the house and he messaged us. He's like, yo, are you guys inside? We're like, no. He's like literally someone's running through the house right now. Alright, well that's enough. <laughs> then I rushed out of here and went to the barn over here, and that's where I saw hell for 15 minutes. All by myself. Yep. Come around the front. We drove by and we were looking at, at the windows and everything. I saw through this front door here, the curtain was pulled back and a little girl literally had her arm looking out the window. She was in a little dress wow. and she was looking out the window and I pointed and she went, I'm like, jump behind. 
Oh my god. Yep, and I was like, okay, so I guess that's what tonight's gonna be like. And then in case you don't know what this house is, you got this gigantic sign to tell you where you're at. <laughs> June 10, 1912. A lot of memories here, a lot of memories, my goodness. And we'll make a move. Hey, how about I listen to your sound? Talk for us a little there, Jesse. Yeah, so my name's Jesse. I'm here to do an interview for Job Channel. Let's get to work. Let's get to work, yeah. <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast? What did I have for breakfast? I had a uh, cauliflower sausage and uh, egg biscuit. Nice. Yeah. No one ever eats breakfast anymore. You need to clap right in front of your face. Very nice. Okay. That looks great. Great. And everyone's clear. Posture good, shoulders good. You look great. Good. Good. We're yeah. gonna roll this interview, everyone. We are rolling on the interview. And tell me your name, spell it, and then tell me, I, I, based on our conversation, I, I, I'm i thinking it says former paranormal investigator. That is perfect. That's perfect. exactly what I was thinking on my way cool. here. So. Thanks, man. So yep. tell me who you are, spell your name, and say that for me. Okay. My name is Jesse Olney, J-E-S-S-E-A-L-N-E, -E -S -S -E -E, and I'm a former paranormal investigator. Fantastic. The Bliska X Murder House is an infamous house here in the state of Iowa. Pretty much you live here in Iowa, you know about Bliska. It's a small town, small house, small family of six. Two guests sent, spent the night there and they were all brutally murdered um, overnight by some random unsolved person at this point. They were bludgeoned to death by an ax. It was so bad that the parents were actually undefinable. You could not figure out which was which between the man and the woman. And all of these six kids also perished in the house as well. And when you said earlier, you said this house, if you're from here, you know what this is, yes. right? What does that mean and what do you know? This house is iconic simply because Iowa isn't well known for these gigantic murder acts, if you will. It's in a small town where everybody knows each other, in the middle of cornfields, basically. And it's a small, quaint little house on the corner of a street. And you wouldn't expect such a horrific act to happen in such a small hometown environment. It just struck to the core of anyone that calls himself an island because it just strikes fear that even if you don't live in a big city, it can happen to you. Could you describe that, the, you know, the sheets were on the, the mirrors, that the, the bodies were covered. Explain those things that I just said, because I'll be cut out of it. Okay. Um, but at the same time, then kind of take that and, and explain. So explain what was seen there yeah. and then why, or if you know why. Yeah. So walking into the house, you would have found the bodies on the beds covered with sheets. And then next to them were mirrors. And these were actually covered as well. The belief was that if they covered the mirrors, their spirits could not get caught up in those mirrors. And if they wouldn't have left them covered, they believed that they would get, after they died, that their spirits would get caught and stuck in those mirrors. And so it was almost like an act of mercy in a way that they would cover these mirrors so that these people wouldn't be stuck in, in this house forever, that they'd be able to go where they're destined to go. And so it's such a weird, strange piece of you know, evidence, if you will, to find in this home where things were so brutal and vicious, but almost being merciful at the same time. That way then just to, you know, I'm never asking anyone to change their story. And I appreciate that. I so appreciate that. tell me how you're comfortable with that, but I want to ask you and just run with this. What happened to you there? What's the most intense thing that happened to you at Villisca? I could barely see my hand in front of my own face. And to the right of me is a wall and this giant black snake's head comes out of the wall. It slithers down to the ground and it begins to, to slither around my feet. Now I'm thinking to myself, is this actually happening or is this something that I'm just making up? I keep watching it. I choose not to move and just let it happen. It begins to slither around my ankles, up to my knees, up to my waist. Before I know it, it's up and around my chest. This snake then wraps itself around my, my shoulders. And as it makes itself around to the front of my face, the snake's head turns into a cloaked head. There's a white face inside of this dark cloaked hood and it just quickly moves into my face with this just evil hissing sound. And it just overwhelmed me with fear I've never experienced before. At this moment, I realized I'd pretty much lost full control of myself. I felt like I was beginning, beginning to become possessed. I started to realize I can't move my arms, I can't move my legs, I can't even speak. And so I started to just cry out to God, God, I need you to help me out of this. I need you to get me out of this situation. And I couldn't move. I'm thinking, what am I gonna do if I lose all control of everything? And at that moment, 
I see this red siren going off in my mind's eye. And I hear this really loud blaring alarm. And it's almost like God intervened and was like, go, leave now. So I just ran as fast as I could out of that area. And I went to the barn behind the house. And I sat there and for 15 minutes, I sat alone and experienced hell. And for lack of a better term, in all of its glory, I saw people falling out of a sky of fire. I saw flaming clouds. I heard screaming and yelling that I can still hear to this day. The most brutal environment I could ever imagine. Hot, flesh burning, muscle melting, just bones and, and raggedy creatures just walking around. And it was only when my brother came out and found me by myself that he took me off of the property of the house and laid hands on me and prayed over me. And finally, at that moment, the evil let go of me and I was able to finally regain my composure. That's been over seven years. And I still relive that on a very, very consistent basis. And it's left such a deep scar in me that I actually walked away from the paranormal. And I've never looked back simply because of that house. Wow. Just give me a line there. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially wrapped for the day of filming with Travel Channel. Really, really excited for how things turned out. They were really excited as well. The, uh, the interview process was the best I've ever been a part of. I've worked with Travel Channel a handful of times now and worked at the Biography Channel and I've worked in big movie studios and now I've worked on location and by far the best filming experience I've had production-wise and even just the, uh, the people that I worked with behind the cameras and you know, the producers and everything, it was just, it was awesome, it was amazing. Did you able to stop by Velisca and take you in there a little bit and uh, have Tiny go to Velisca for the first time and be able to meet Johnny and just catch up with that and you know it's just been a really great day I'm really excited about uh, the final product um, as we get closer to the release of what this is for I'll definitely be posting about it on my social media so make sure you guys subscribe to me on Instagram and get all the details as we move closer to that most likely I'm guessing fall of this year is when we'll see this come to fruition out of respect for the producers and the crew um, that are some good friends of mine. I'm gonna keep things tight-lipped so as to not ruin anything. As always, keep it locked here to It's All Me. If you haven't subscribed, you hit that subscribe button. We've got more content coming. we got the, the mukbang video coming. we got the part two for the burping contest Q&A coming up and uh, other things as well. A few surprises up my sleeve. So excited about those things. But for now, we're gonna sign off, get this two hour drive home taken care of see you guys in the next one and as always it's all knee and no foot goodbye daughter goodbye